Dear students, welcome back to the course on organizational behavior, individual dynamics in organization. We move to the next lecture of module 6 where we look into values. Values at workplace and specifically values that cut across cultures. Now this is going to be a very interesting topic because culture is very significant when we look into OBM organizational behavior management specifically. So what are the values that cut across cultures? What is the relevance of that? That we'll discuss in this session. I'm Dr. Abraham Sir Isaac. I'm a faculty at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So let's start with today's theme. It's fascinating to explore the differences in, va in values across cultures and appreciate the richness they bring to the tapestry of human experience. Now this is quite relevant because when we look into different culture, different cultural orientation, values embedded in different culture, it all amalgamates, it all combines to form a tapestry of human experience. Tapestry is something which we hang as, as part of uh, cloth or wall hanging which will uh, see something like this. So values across culture, let's, let's begin with values across culture. Now, values can, uh, we, in, the, in the previous lecture, if you recollect, we have discussed what values are. That said, values can vary significantly across cultures, there's no doubt about it. But some common themes emerge, be it in the same culture, be it in different culture. But when we are looking into a spectrum of values, there are some common themes that are emerging. In some cultures, we see that there might be a strong emphasis on community harmony. We don't want individualistic oriented people. We want to have a community harmony while others might prioritize individualism or personal improvement, personal achievement. All these aspects we have seen. So there, if we are looking into culture, so any discussion on culture specifically starts with uh, taking two turns. One is looking culture from a collectivistic point of view. We'll discuss that in detail. We also look into cultural segmentation where there are individualistic oriented culture, right? So when we look into culture, specifically values in culture, it's fascinating to explore that the differences and we appreciate the richness that they bring to the tapestry of human experience. So when we have people who belong to different culture, who come from different culture, are part of the same team or part of the same group or the organization in general. We feel that there are a plethora or there is a group of, there is a big cohort of ideas, fresh ideas, innovative ideas that are coming your way. Now let's look into values across culture. We'll try to uh, look into the different cultural orientation. We'll look into the uh, the different models behind cultural orientation specifically. The first one is hierarchy and authority. Now there are some cultures which specifically give prime importance to hierarchy and authority. There are cultures which, which look into the hierarchy as the uh, way to progress in an organization. There are uh, cultures which specifically have uh, reverence, have respect towards authority. But then there are also contrasting cultural context which look for more of uh, egalitarian setup, which looks more into a uh, uh, equality based arrangement in terms of their workforce. Now there is also another important aspect which is known as time orientation. Now when we look into time orientation, there are some cultures which are, uh, let's say, monochronic. When you look into monochronic culture, we see that the task in hand is important. Rather than going for multitasking, they do uh, different segments of tasking. Like, let's say, one task in the hand, they complete it in a very systematic way, then they move it to the next task. The monochronic culture also brings in a certain level of appreciation towards uh, punctuality, a certain levels of uh, appreciation towards doing everything in time within the schedule. Whereas, you look into a contrasting culture context of polychronic uh, culture, which is more of a time-based frame where time is considered as fluid. 
time is more fluid there is lack of appreciation towards punctuality there is lack of appreciation or adherence to schedule deadlines etc so there the social aspect of uh, congruence is important there people are more interested in working together let it take more time but the the task could be uh, fluid there could be multi tasks that people are engaged in time is not the specific criteria of completion of a particular task so there are culture corners specifically when you look into the western culture it is more monochronic in nature whereas uh, the mid eastern asian culture etc are little more uh, polychronic in nature where you where you look or where you see time as fluid so that is where when we we at least assume that uh, the the deadlines are not very important multitasking becomes critical there are situations where uh, you know people tend to uh, involve in different tasks but seldom do they complete one so we see all types of people like this in the organization that that is the relevance of time orientation in organizational behavior now let's look into the communication style there are certain cultural contexts which are high context communication Uh, oriented for example some some cultural uh, context whereby you look and see that the communication happens through non verbal cues there are situations where more than explicit talk explicit channels of communication you look into the non verbal cues back channel communications etc so those are high context high cultural context communication strategies whereas you look into low context it is more of explicit communication whatever you want to put uh, as record you tell it explicitly or you write it or document it explicitly more of a western culture is low context on in in that perspective whereas you again look into the eastern or the asian uh, cultural context is more of high context communication that we have seen another important aspect is attitude towards scenes now this is very critical when you look into the cultural ramifications specifically when people are uh, prone towards change or there there is a lack of adaptability towards change so all these these two parameters we see that certain culture generally enhances or uh, reinforces the quest for innovation new fresh ideas so this is where you look and see that more different cultural uh, inputs coming into picture there are some culture which are open to this whereas there are some context cultural context which are very much uh, resistive to all the inputs that are coming in different ways so the attitude towards change happens to be yet another important value across culture now you look into specifically individualism versus collectivism so i am giving you a a set of all possible values that are spread in a platter across culture so individualism versus collectivism we see uh, the most discussed value among the cultural context in in any talk any discussion pertaining to culture so there are some culture contexts which are highly individualistic they look for personal achievement they look for personal glory uh, they are not very keen on team based output group based working arrangements whereas there are some cultural contexts which are more collectivistic in nature where uh, the the group is important where the social norms are important how you achieve is more important than what you achieve so there are such situations which which restrict an individualistic personality to work in a collectivistic uh, centric uh, context so those are some of the inherent disadvantages that may creep in another important aspect is power distance when you look into certain culture context there 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 could be a hierarchy based setup which we have already seen in the previous slide uh, people are more prone to keep a distance uh, based on uh, the hierarchy or based out of the respect towards the levels of functioning so there are some cultures which again promote or advocate uh, as i mentioned egalitarian setup there are some cultures which are more uh, equality centric cultures then there is something called as uncertainty avoidance you know when people are 
more oriented or high on uncertainty avoidance they want to be away from uncertainty they want to be away from ambiguity so any instance where which can create confusion which can create uncertainty which can elicit ambiguity they stay away from that but then there are certain cultural contexts which which do not uh, actually mind about ambiguity they try to thrive and survive and flourish during this this uh, uh, atmosphere of ambiguity or uncertainty. Then there is another important aspect which is known as achievement nurturing orientation. So this you have to see achievement versus nurturing. Some pers some some uh, cultural context which focus on achievement. There is a quest to achieve, a personal gain, personal achievement, materialistic. Whereas there are some uh, collectivistic scenarios we can say where people tend to bring out the best out of individuals but not on a personal front but more on a group based dynamics. So this is nurturing orientation. So I am giving you uh, an explanation of different types of values that cut across different cultures. Now that said we should not be under the impression that it is all oriented in one dimension or it is all going in, in one line of thought. There are caveats about cross-cultural knowledge. Cross-cultural organization research specifically has gained attention due to increased globalization and culture diversity within organization. If there was hardly any opening up of the economy, there was hardly any globalization that has happened across the world, then we do not see a possibility of different culture being imbibed or getting transferred or uh, people from different contexts working in other other organization the the very concept of mncs and uh, you know organizations that are spread across different continents have emerged or have happened because of uh, the existence of the arrival or of globalization specifically so the problem that many studies though we say that have uh, researched on cultural aspect the significant issue in all those studies if you if you look into they are being done on a small sample now there is a problem with 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 sampling in those cases because it need not specifically represent a culture. We are making the assumption while making the study that a small sample it is irrespective of whatever research flavor you are taking in. It is a sample based study there could be some dimensions of error that can creep in. Another problem in those studies that often assume that one country represents one culture and that is not the case. Specifically if you look into India we see that it is a microcosm or it is a, a amalgamation we sometimes call this as a tossed salad or sometimes we call it as a mixture of all those cultures which come together. There could be diversity which we will discuss in the, uh, the coming uh, aspects or coming portions. We will see that th th a particular country need not represent one single culture and that is a mistake most of these studies have categorically made when they are looking or studying into a particular studying a particular culture. They try to make the assumption which might be possibly wrong that one country represents one particular culture. Now we look into specifically culture diversity in India because I feel that a small discussion is warranted in this part. We look into India which has been historically known for having uh, been the cradle of many cultures and religions. We, we see that India has evolved as a country where there is lot of differences but there is unity irrespective of these differences. There are different cultural aspects, there are different uh, uh, language barriers, there are different you know way people eat, dress. Uh, the way they carry on in their day to day activities, they work, they talk, everything might be different. The value systems but of a majority of people in India have some homogeneous values. That is more interesting when we look into uh, the background where there are lot of differences. We see people from different culture, they, they, they bring in a lot of differences but that said when you totally try to scan the entire value system there are some quiet homogeneous values forming the sum total of the overall culture. That is where uh, sometimes I have already told that uh, when we do a research we make a fundamental error in assuming that one country represents a culture and this is the thought 
or this is the point which acts as an antidote to the to the earlier point where we see that it might be the case that there are different cultural contexts, there are different uh, cultural aspirations, different ways people behave, different types of uh, uh, acts or different types of uh, attires or the way they, they carry or their predisposition might be different. But all that, that said, there could be some congruence at one point where there are some uh, homogeneous values coming together and forming a set of core values. Certain homogeneous values like high regard for collectivism, uh, feminism, power distance, etc. have been observed commonly in, in context of India. Now, let's look into certain dimensions of this cultural diversity specific to India. One is urbanization. When we look into urbanization specifically, we'll see that the development and expansion of the economy, new urban centers are being developed. There is still some divergence in terms of values in the workforce. So, we see that what all development the country uh, claims, it is a collective outcome of both the metropolitan cities as well as the small towns or the small cities which are emerging. In fact, there are many scientifically proven studies which say that the innovation or uh, the entrepreneurial potential is more vigorous in terms of uh, people from small towns. So, urbanization has had its effect, there is no doubt about it. That said, there is a possibility or there is a level of uh, improvement in terms of cultural diversity that is coming from different parts of the country. There is another important aspect of linguistic diversity. Linguistic diversity is nothing but the dominant use of a language for informal communication among groups that may depend on the popular language spoken in the region of the workplace or the one spoken by a majority of people in the workplace. So, we see that India uh, represents a, a amalgamation of lot of languages. In fact, there are so many languages, even in the Indian constitution, in the 8th schedule, there are 22 languages which are being registered. But apart from that, there are so many languages that are existing uh, within the country. In fact, if we go deeper into that analysis, within the same language, there are so many dialects, there are so many variations of how people uh, approach the language, how people actually speak or talk uh, the particular language. So, linguistic diversity is a very critical aspect when you look into organizational behavior specifically. There are organizations which work in, in let's say, Bengaluru and people are coming all the way from, let's say, Uttar Pradesh or let's say from Bihar or let's say from West Bengal, there might be a, a amalgamation of different languages that are coming in, in that particular zone. Even, let's take a particular region, let's, let's look into a company that's based out of Hyderabad, you might uh, see that even within the south, there, there is possibility of different languages from Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam to uh, Be Kannada, etc. So, all these aspects, they, they form uh, what is called as the linguistic diversity. Another important aspect is ethnic diversity. Now, ethnic diversity uh, is all about workplaces that should have an egalitarian and equalitarian view and respect the needs of employees of every ethnicity. People belong to different ethnicities, there is no doubt about it. People come from different uh, ethnic origins, but if an organization is not egalitarian in its approach, there is a certain level of discrimination. We had a detailed analysis about discrimination in terms of diversity, etc. In, in our previous lectures, you can always revisit those uh, segments of the, those lectures specifically. If an organization is discriminatory in its approach towards different ethnicity, the organization is bound to perform in a, in a very uh, worst way. So, we look into organizations where people gel together, the people who are coming from the human capital which is coming from different ethnic origin, they tend to uh, take up and form as a single culture which is called as organizational culture. Sometimes there is some learning associated to that. It could be part of organizational learning 
all this documented, it could be part of institutional memories. All these discussions we already have. So that's what I am not going into uh, that in, in detail. But if an organization has to thrive in a multicultural setup, it has to appreciate the existence and the thriving and the benefits ethnic diversity can bring in to the workforce. Another important aspect is a regional diversity. When we look into regional diversity specifically, all the previous elements of diversity are spread differently among different kinds of India. This makes specifically cultural pockets within an overall multicultural land. Cultural pockets determine the definitive value dimensions of the dominant workforce of a particular region. So when you are looking into specifically regional specific diversity, people come from different zones, people come from different areas. Uh, similar to ethnic diversity, organizations should tend to appreciate the regional diversity aspect as well. Now let's look into uh, one last point before we conclude, which is generational values. Now this is very keen and which, this is very interesting because many a time we see that individuals uh, do not perform in a way that their forefathers or the previous generations uh, would perform or would actually uh, talk or walk or perform. So generational values happens to be very, very critical area of study. So in the beginning of this, uh, the whole course itself, I I'm, uh, categorically mentioned that this course has a certain background in empirical, sound empirical research. On that basis, we tend to see that generational values are very significant when you actually tend to develop or tend to uh, look into the, the importance of values in organization. When you look into generational values, what we see is that researchers have integrated several recent analysis of work values into four groups that attempt to capture the unique values of different cohorts or generations, mainly with respect to the US workforce. We should not undermine uh, that the context here. Th the first part would be baby boomers. Boomers are a large cohort born after World War II. So you should look into the period when veterans returned to their families and times were really good. Boomers enter the workforce from the mid 1960s through the mid 1980s. So these baby boomers happen to be the first and the foremost segment of the workforce which tend to transfer the first generational values. The second aspect or second set of people would be the, the lives of Xers, which are also called as Generation Xers, who have been shaped by globalization. They have been shaped by two career parents, more modern amenities, NTV, AIDS, technology, computers, etc. So they are looked mainly or they are nurtured or they are being influenced mainly by globalization. They don't tend to work with respect to one single rule. They don't tend to work with respect to one particular path in an organization. More than that, they are looking into or they are being born and brought up in a world which is shaped by technology, which is shaped by globalization, which is shaped by the modernity that is happening all around us. And the most recent entrance to the workforce are the millennials. When you look into the millennials, they are also called as netters, nexters, generation years and generation nexters. They grew up during the prosperous time. So they are more particular, they are more choosy. They, they, they have uh, the instant gratification that is in there. They have a lot of things that other uh, generations do not possess. Uh, in, in a positive as well as in a negative sense. So the, the point I wanted to specifically mention here is when we look into values specifically, we have seen that there are different variations, but there are also generational values that are very critical. To sum up this session, I wanted you to understand and analyze what is the importance of uh, values that cut across different cultures. There are specific values that are uh, milestones or that are, that are the kingpin uh, differentiators of particular values, no doubt about it, but uh, of different cultures. But that said, 
I always believe, and this is the outcome of certain uh, research, that we have some set of core values, some set of homogeneous core values, which tend to uh, reflect what that particular culture is. We look into India specifically, it is having different culture, it is having different languages, different types of people, different uh, ethnicity, ethnic origins, lot of differences. But that said, there is some level of some set values, some core values which are homogeneous in itself. So mainly when you are looking into organization, there might be people who are coming from different walks of life, different ethnic origin, different languages, different types of people all across you but there are some values some values like let's say respect towards others some value like uh, you know the, the team capability working in teams so there are some some collectivistic centric approaches all these aspects tend to make that organization one single entity just introspect are you going working in such an organization or what is that the core set of values that define or that play a vital role in your organization. Thank you for listening to me patiently. That's all from today's uh, class. We'll see you in the next lecture. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.